Western Big Six football. This is Jim Sanders with Mike Strickland. We're at Soul Bowl, Western Big Six. Tough uh, conference ball games tonight, Mike. We got the Panthers against Moline. This is a TCI, Channel 38, Family Ties production. Michael, what about those Maroons? Well, the Maroons, I uh, got to see them last week. Big, strong team. I like to run the ball, but the quarterback has a pretty good arm, too. So okay. we can see a mixer between from the Maroons tonight. Well, good. Well, you know, I was kind of looking at what you wrote down last uh, week from the ball game. I didn't have a chance to be there, and uh, uh, man, they are big up front. I had a chance to see them several times last year, and a lot of these same names keep coming back. You got uh, McCauley and Stewart and Davies, and those kids coming in that line with Rice. I know he played a lot last year. Uh, some really good backs with Kelly and Beard, and uh, the other guys uh, run the ball pretty well too. So, and the passing game is good, isn't it? Very good, very good. Well, so we got that on their offensive side of the ball. Some of the same kids back on defense, but I think their defense. This has been outstanding uh, throughout the course of the early part of this season. Well, Coach, I was more impressed with the defense than I was the offense last week. Uh, the big guys, if you if you can't get them blocked, well, you're going three yards back. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Every if you time. Don't get a hat on them. They're taking you back three yards. Uh, you've seen both Rock Island and Moline. What would your comparison be between those two squads as you've seen them each one time? Well, from the one time seeing them, I'd say they're pretty evenly matched. Moline has a little bigger line, but I think Rock Island had a little more team speed. Okay, well, we'll see. That'll come up here in a couple weeks. That'll be a great ball game to see, too. For the Panthers, Coach Tracy's got those kids uh, hustling uh, like always. Uh, you've seen UT play a couple times. What's your reaction to that? their ball club? Well, UT, the thing I like about them is they're, they're scrappy. They're a little small, but they keep fighting. There's no quitting the Panthers, and that's exactly what you know I remember when it, from being a player. So uh, I'm very impressed with the Panthers also. Well, the Panthers are going to go again with the backfield with the Joan and ja uh, Ernie Jack and J.J. Brokaw. Cercioni, I've been very Im impressed with Paul as he's uh, developed into a varsity quarterback this year. How about you? Cercioni has been real good, and I, I think that each week he goes along getting better with his passing game, yeah. getting more accurate, putting a little more air under the ball. I think he's coming along just fine, Coach. Well, and defensively, I've been real impressed. You know, a guy I, I've kind of watched play and for a couple of years I, I, is Doug Seals. He's kind of a, an unsung hero in there, 180-pound senior, number 70. You'll see him out there again tonight. Uh, he's had a really a great start to the year. Yes, he has. And I'm also impressed with uh, Schroeder, the defensive end, and his younger brother on the defensive end, Brian Shields, have impressed me a lot. Those boys have done a nice job. Ernie Jack kind of anchors that linebacker core. Jeff Freeman's been playing linebacker for a couple weeks here and uh, I think he's doing a really good job also and the secondary has been good so I think it's going to be exciting I like uh, JJ Brokaw he's you know he does a lot of things for you know he talked about some of these players going both ways and punting and doing all this stuff and JJ's had a great year so we got a game tonight the Maroons come into the ball game undefeated Panthers have one loss and uh, it's a huge game in the Western Big Six tonight it's prediction time Mike right now we talked earlier I'm we I'm 13 and 2 and you're 12 and 3 Three ball games tonight. Let's start right here at Soul Bowl. UT versus Moline. You first. I'm taking the Panthers. Oh, man, you're tough. Well, I'll, I'll take the Maroons tonight. I'll take the Maroons tonight. We got Rock Island versus Alleman. I'm taking the Rocks. Okay, and I will also. And I'll, uh, we'll go Quincy uh, is playing at Galesburg. And you want to make me make my pick first, aren't you? Nah, I oh. got the home team. I'm going to okay. take Galesburg. Well, then I'll, I'll just, uh, since we might as well disagree twice, I'll take Quincy. Sounds good. So there me. you have it. We'll find out next week how we did. Hey, we'll be back with the the uh, opening kickoff here from Soul Bowl. Uh, again, Western Big Six football, the UT Panthers against the Moline Maroons. And we'll see you in just a few minutes. We're on, folks. Here we're at the United Township High School Soul Bowl. It's the Panthers. United Township get ready to take the field. It's their home game. Big ball game for the Panthers. Tonight, as you notice there, they, they had a cheerleading clinic tonight, Mike, and a bunch of the young ladies that want to be cheerleaders for UT in the future are here. And as the Panthers take the field, they've formed a tunnel for them to come out. I think that's really interesting. I think that's a great opportunity for the young ladies to view the varsity cheerleaders and work with them for the you afternoon. Bet. You it's bet. It's probably you. a real fun time for them. On the far sideline, the Maroons take the field. Uh, evidently, they didn't quite get all their cheerleaders out here, obviously, because they didn't have a cheerleading clinic here. Exactly. So they're taking the field, too, and both teams are getting ready. We'll be back with the opening kickoff here from United Township High School in just a minute.
Well, Mike, we're ready to kick off here for Soul Bowl, kicking off from Moline. We've got a number there, but I can't figure out who he is yet. Well, we're going to see you back for the Panthers. We know we have Brokaw back there deep, and we'll get the other number for you in just a minute. A line drive kick. McCormick picks the ball up for the Panthers, gets the ball out to the 35, breaks two tackles, get across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. UT will take over at their own 43. Mike, what the Panthers, what's that Panther offense look like? Well, uh, offense starting out at your ends, we have Schroeder and Seals, and then uh, at your tackles, we have Brooks and Schleter, and at your guard, Smolinski and Freeman. Carton will do your center. Um, Cercioni is your quarterback. Jack will be your fullback. At your wing back, you got LeJones. And at your other back, you have Brokaw. Brokaw will get the first carry for the Panthers. Breaks the ball to the 45. About, back just about up across the 45-yard line. Looks out to about the 47. And it'll set up a second down for the Panthers. Coach, that was Dan Burris doing the kicking for Moline. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Mike. I missed that. I, you get him at an angle like this, it's kind of hard to see him sometime. Well, the Panthers pick up four yards on that first down. And coming in with the play for the Panthers is number 83, and that's Luke Ritchie. And the Panthers will run several players in at those end positions, bringing plays into the ballgame for UT. The Maroons in a 5-2 defense. Cercioni calling the signals. Hands the ball off to Ernie Jack, and he pops across midfield down to about the 48-yard line with a nice run there for UT. Well, Coach Moline is running a 5-2 defense tonight, and it looks like their ends are waiting to see where the power of the UT backfield goes, and then they split off to the strong and weak side. Coming into the Panther lineup is number five. That's uh, Miles Edmonds, brings a play in. In that 50 defense from Moline, we'll give you the front right off the bat. Scott Rice and DeBleek will play at the defensive end. Stewart and Davies at the tackles. Boyer is the nose guard. Wide receivers for the Panthers. Fullback again, hard into the middle on a third down situation. Near the first down is uh, Ernie Jack, and we'll see where they spot this, this ball. Well, wow, the Maroons right there did something very interesting. They dropped those big tackles and they moved them in over the guards, making sure that the A gaps and the B gaps were pretty much plugged up there with the nose guard over the center. We'll see if that's a standard adjustment for them. A lot of times teams will do that, uh, move if, especially if they move those linebackers out of a, a spot, kind of go to what we call a double eagle look. We'll take a look and see if we see that as we go along. The linebackers from Moline are McCauley and uh, Van Voren. And that defensive secondary has Warren, Molina, Chad Kelly, and Patrick Wren uh, in that defensive secondary. And they're going to set the chains here, and we'll see what's going on. We've got a short delay. Oh, they're going to measure for this, I guess, although they, they signaled first down, didn't they, Mike? They signaled for first down, but I think uh, Coach MacArthur over there screamed for a measurement. <laughs> well, and the officials were right. They were right on that one, right on that one. So the Panthers moving the ball. First down, ball into Moline territory, the ball at the 46-yard line. And UT is doing, Mike, what they really need to do in a ball game like this is get a little ball control, move that ball down the field, steadily gaining several first downs. So the field conditions appear to be still pretty good. It's real wet, obviously been raining for quite a while. Speed option, Cercioni slips down and loses about a yard, although he almost got back to the line of scrimmage, Mike. Well, the conditions are kind of wet and sloppy today. Foot footage is going to be hard for them to keep. Uh, whoever can keep their feet tonight, Coach, is really going to end up the winner. How'd you like it? You've played in several mud games, obviously, uh, in your career. Uh, was this a... Uh, 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 a Mike Strickland fun time or was it a tough time? This is Mike Strickland dream time. <laughs> you know, we got out here and we got dirty and I knew that we were going to run the ball, you know, real slippery, not a whole lot of passing. Well, we didn't pass a lot anyways. <laughs> but uh, we were going to run you had, you know, and, and get guy. dirty. I like getting dirty, Coach. There you go. A little double eagle look by Moline this time. Cercioni going to go up top. Receiver falls down. And uh, not any chance to complete that one. Cercioni just going on the fly pattern. Looked like Jesse Schroeder was the intended receiver, but he fell down out here about the 30 yard line. And it sets up a third and 11 for UT. Well, they went into the double eagle, like you said there, Coach. And uh, I thought that might be a short yardage adjustment, but it just may be something that uh, they're looking at using to stop the, the Panther inside run. Well, a lot of times, especially your wing T teams, and UT runs a lot of wing T stuff. Uh, if you cover up the guards, that's, those are the guys who do all the pulling for you. And if you can cover those guards up and then run with those guards, you got a chance. Sweep. 
Brokaw tackled deep in his own backfield, lost back across the 50-yard line, about a six or seven yard loss, and a beautiful play by Moline. That was a great play by uh, junior Scott Rice, a 6'2", 195, and he just kept contained, did exactly what he was told, grabbed him, slung him to the ground. Well, it sets up a fourth down situation. UT's got the ball right at midfield where they finally mark that forward progress. Fourth down and about 14, the Panthers send the punt team in. Brokaw will be the punter. Ernie Jack will be the snapper, and the Panthers are going to go with at least one wide out and pretty much maximum protection from that point on as Moline looks like they're going to try to set up a return. Brokaw, nice punt down the field. Is that uh, Beard back there? That's Molina. Molina, yeah, there you go. And he makes a nice cut. There's a flag down on the play, looks like, already. Molina gets knocked out of bounds about the 31 or 32 yard line. Going to mark it back about the 27. They say he stepped out of bounds there. Well, it looked like uh, the UT uh, punt cover team just over pursued a little bit, got a little too deep, started to close in, let Molina get to the outside. Not sure what the flag is, but they're speaking to UT right now. Could be against Moline. Well, sometimes that field position, you know, Moline at the, say at the 27 yard line would start off a pretty good field position, but a penalty, the flag is down about the 23. So they walk at back half the distance to the goal line. That'll make a, a pretty good, uh, ooh, something against. Uh, let's see, it looks like we're gonna have both teams penalized and will we play fourth down. So. Uh, a penalty against UT, a penalty, a, a, a clipping penalty against Moline, and we'll replay fourth down. Well, Mol Molina and Kelly still back to get the ball for Moline. Now, Kelly's one of the leading scorers and leading rushers in the conference, if not the, I think he is the leader in the conference, and uh, this is my first chance to see him play this year. I've seen him play in the past, and uh, he's always been very impressive, Mike. Yeah, well, it'll be tough for him to get yardage today. Like I said, on the ground, it's, unless he's got some good cleats there, it's a little slick. And cutting's going to be very cut to a minimal today, Coach. Right. Well, we'll see. And, and sometimes uh, particular offenses are better suited for the, the straight-ahead game, for example, as opposed to a lot of, of uh, sweeps and, and cuts on the outside. But we'll see. A good snap again. Broke on a kick. Gets the ball off nice again. Ball's going to roll out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to mark that thing, and the Panthers are going to come out ahead a little bit, and they're going to mark that ball at about the 18-yard line, and we're early first quarter action, 8.36 to go, 0-0 zero, zero ball game. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back. Moline, first down, two tight ends, wishbone offense. Second man through is Kelly. It looks like the Moline's going to run the ball right at the Panthers right, right now. Let's take a look at that Moline offense. They've got at the ends, they've got Rice and Rainey. The tackles are Davies and B.J. Jagers, 267-pound senior. Stewart and McCauley are going to play at the guards, and Kevin Van Boren is the center. Jason Beard, the quarterback, a lot of experience there, Mike, at quarterback from last year with Hines and Powell and Chad Kelly in the backfield, and they're back to two tight ends again. Wide line splits. Usually that means Moline's going to run the ball up the middle when they go to the wider splits. Second man through again. This time number 10 carries the ball for the Maroons. That's Nathan Lynn on the carry that time for Moline. And that was Dustin Smolinski with the tackle there. Good penetration and get the man in the backfield, hold him to a minimal gain there. That was a good play. It sets up a third down situation, so the Panther defense has done a nice job here early going. On that defense, at ends, we have Seals and Schroeder. At your tackles, we have Abney and Pruitt. Uh, at your nose tackles, we have Doug Seals and Dustin Smolinski. Uh, running your linebackers, you have Freeman and Ernie Jack. Out in your secondary, you have Edmonds, Brokaw, and Lejeune. Well, they'll break the bone this time, go to a wing to the, the right side of the formation. Sweep, outside comes Chad Kelly. One block and he pops through. Going to be short of the first down, though. Tackled about the 27, 28 yard line. Good play by the Panthers that time. It was good outside contained by the Panthers. It looked like for a minute there, there was a good opening out there, but the pursuit closed it down and they kept them a yard short of this first down, coach. Yeah, good opening series. Beautiful series for a three and out is what you hope to do if you're uh, the underdog in a big game like this. Both teams have handled the ball pretty well in the, in the slippery conditions, and Moline's going to be forced to punt here. Well, here we go. We're, I guess UT's going to ask him to measure. Some Moline's going to ask him to measure. But the ball's at the 28-yard line, and we'll see if, uh, if they made the first down. 
Stretch that chain short by the length of the football, and it'll be fourth and about a half a yard for the Maroons. 6.52 to go here in the first quarter. You go for it here. This is quite a gamble, Mike. Yeah, it's a little early to go for it. Um, and where do you run the ball? I mean, UT's still in their patented 6-2 defense. They're clogging up all the holes. That's eight people up to stop the run. And I wouldn't think you'd pass on, on a fourth down play like this. No, but Moline's run some trick plays from this particular formation. They run a uh, uh, fake punt, uh, snap that ball to the short man. They've done some shifting out of this where the quarterback is lined up under the center and shifted out to a wide out. But right now it's a, it's a two tight end maximum protection situation. And the snap is a good one. Panthers with a good rush. That nice punt that time. Broke all returns. Panthers trying to set the wall on the near sideline. Get the ball back to about the 46 or 7 yard line again, Mike. An excellent field position for the Panthers. The Panthers are coming up real good on the field position part here today. And I think this is building a little confidence here early in the game anyways for them. Bet. Moyer was the punter for Moline that time. Did a nice job of catching it. Kicked the ball out of danger there a little bit. So UT will take the ball up. Uh, over at their own 47 yard line and here come the Panthers again with the football. Wide receiver goes to the far side. That's Edmonds wide. Excuse me. That could be broke out there. Five or six. Outside veer look. Ernie Jack on the carry. Ball loose on the field. Everybody's after it. Still after it. And we're going to see who's come up with that. Second down. The Panthers are on that ball. Ernie Jack was hit real hard that time coming off tackle. Well, that's the danger of playing in a muddy condition like this. You know, coach's nightmare to see that ball pop out. Yep. Well, the Panthers went with a little outside veer look towards the wide receiver side of the formation. And it looked like a little crease there, but he got hit real hard. Somebody closed him from the inside out on that one. And you're right, Mike. If you take a look at Moline's defense, you got your two tackles and the, and the nose guard are down. The two linebackers are ready, but the defensive ends wait to see the power of the formation, and then they shift. So the Panthers come out, split backs, motion, Lejone in motion. They're going to stretch them out a little bit. Cercioni on a quarterback trap. Moline's patented play, really, and it goes nowhere. No, right there, that was good. You know, up front play by number 79 of the Maroons, Chris Davies. Uh, those guys are big and strong in there. Uh, you're going to have yep. to get them off balance or maybe get a little movement up there if you can. Well, you run that play really to try, you're going to trap a tackle, that's usually a trap play, and I didn't look real close to see if it was a trap, but Moline has just really tortured uh, UT over the last few years with that quarterback trap, I call it, it looks like a little draw, quarterback draw, but it sets up a long yardage situation, third and nine for the Panthers, Lejone motion the other way, Cercioni on the long count. Nice pass outside, a little high, intended for J.J. Brokaw, and it goes incomplete, and UT will face a fourth and nine situation at their own at their own 49-yard line. Well, that was a pretty good series right there for the Moline defense. They held a little trick play here, a little off-key of, yep. off, uh, off type of play with that quarterback sneak. Yep. Well, we'll take a look. Brokaw is going to punt. Ernie Jack again to snap for the Panthers. Moline looks again as if they're going to try to hold up the wide out to the far side of the field. Molina back and Kelly back, and we'll see what happens. They're definitely trying to kick the ball away from Kelly and aiming it towards Molina, and he will have a chance to catch this. Molina at his own 20-yard line to the 25-30. Look out, he could go. Across the 37-yard line to maybe the 38 or 9-yard line, and Moline will take over. A nice return that time by number 11, Jay Molina, the 5'10", 172-pound defensive back quarterback. So nice, nice move there. Well, that was a great tackle by Brian Le Lejeune. He just stood the man up and drove his feet, and oh, it got me all excited up here, Coach. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Brian is a neat kid and a, really a good football player. Here come the Maroons real quickly, keeping this ball game going, and Moline has the football. Wishbone, two tight ends. Beard at quarterback, power play. Kelly tries to drive that ball. He gets it to the 40-yard line, but that yardage up inside against the Panther defense is, is going to be very difficult to get, I think. Now the linebackers, uh, Ernie Jack and, and Mr. Freeman, are filling the holes real well, and right now the UT line is holding their ground. Well, the Panthers, for you fans that haven't had a chance to see UT play a lot this year, play a 6-2 defense up front a lot of the time, and they're playing two linebackers inside, and they like to bring those linebackers, and, uh, and they're also doing a lot of slanting and moving around inside. 60 defense again. Ernie Jack coming, hand back this time, a little bit of a counter. Hard across the 45-yard line. We'll get a look at who carried the ball that time. 
Looks like number 35 carried the ball that time for Moline. And that is uh, Alex Powell. And he's uh, a, a looks like a good hard runner in there also. So you have you've got Alex, and he's only 5'10", 165 pound junior. The fullback is uh, Brad Hines, six foot, 183 pound junior. So they got a couple juniors in that backfield. But Alex ran real hard that time. Yes, he did. But uh, that line gave him some place to run. They kind of buried everybody and gave him a, a crease to get into. I'm only a little late getting the player on the field this time. And this is a, a formation with the two wide outs to the far side. Quick pitch outside. Oh, nice little cut that time. Hard up inside across the 50-yard line. Looks like for a first down. Again, Powell on the carry. Chris Pruitt was out there to turn the play back inside, but it didn't look like UT had any pursuit. Those big offensive tackles kind of yep. got out there and held the lineman up. Did a good job. Well, they split Chad Powell that time in the slot and it, to the two-receiver side and ran a little quick toss to Alex Powell for the first down. It's first and 10. Ball at the Panther, 49-yard line. 3-10 to go in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero is our score from Soul Bowl. Handoff, this time number 34 on the carry. Big guy rumbles for about 11 yards. Brad Hines, a six foot, 183 pound junior, and another Moline first down. Well, it looks like Moline's found a way to loosen up uh, or, or change Coach Tracy's defense a little bit to give him a little running room. Well, I think, you know, that's been what people have tried to do a little bit with wide receivers and things like that. Maybe try to spread out the defense, maybe at least nothing else, walk the defensive ends out of there so they get a little more of a four-man front. But uh, coming in the ball game, Schleter's coming in the ball game, and number 76 coming out for UT, Chris Pruitt is going to come out. So Schleter replaces Pruitt for UT. Moline with a first and 10 at the Panther 38 yard line. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field. Beard calling signals, ball in the fullback inside again. They found a home in there as Pruitt races across for another 11 or 12 yard gain. Another nice run. That's bro call your safety making tackles. Uh, I hate to sound like a broken record coach, but every week I tell you, the more tackles your safety makes, the, the less effective your defense is. Well, it looks like one of our officials got hit that time. We're going to take a short break here. We'll be right back. Hope he's not injured. We'll be back with a report on that in just a second. Yeah. A little bit. The umpire got it caught, caught up in the middle of that last play. But he looks like he's going to be okay, and Moline has the ball at the Panther 26-yard line. Beard at quarterback, offset eye, second man through this time, a good hard run, this time by number 10 on the carry for Moline. That's Nathan Lynn. He's a 5'11", 167-pound junior. Jesse Schroeder and Ernie Jack in on the tackles there, uh, uh, keeping them to a minimal gain. That was the best little defense we've seen in this series from UT being spread out that far. Well, I think part of that is they, they, they maybe figured UT was going to make some kind of adjustment to the fullback blast in there, and then they get the hand back and hoping to pop somebody clean, but UT played it pretty well. Again, two wide receivers from Moline trying to spread UT out a little bit. Beard, straight ahead hitter by the, by the fullback, I believe. We got that ball a couple more yards down the field. I'm going to mark that and, and call it third down and five at the Panther 24-yard line. This time the, the UT line held strong, holding their ground this trip, making sure they didn't get too many yards in there. But it looks like UT has made a slight adjustment, bringing uh, their, their sixth guy on the line, backing him up a little bit and keeping three on the strong side of Moline's line. Well, UT's working real hard, trying to keep as many guys in there as they possibly can. Beard rolls out, looking to throw. Got the fullback open in the flat out there, but he drops the ball. That pass intended for Brad Hines, number 34, but it goes incomplete. And I'll tell you, in slippery conditions like this, the quarterback rolling, right-handed quarterback rolling to his left, that's a really a tough throw to make. And it was a nice pass, but uh, uh, Hines just couldn't hang on to it. Well, that was good pressure by uh, number 61, Jeff Freeman. He got in the backfield there and kind of disrupted uh, Beard's setting up his feet. Well, it's going to be a tough, uh, a tough play for Moline right now. Fourth down. Scoreboard calls it six yards. I know I called it five last time, so I got to stay with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they couldn't lose a yard on an incomplete pass, so we're going to call it fourth down and five. Ball at the 22-yard line, and let's see what Moline staff, uh, Dan McGuire and his group, have called, and see what Coach Segura's defensive group is going to go. There's the quarterback keeper. Good play from behind by UT. Dustin Albany. 
or Abney with a good play there, running down Beard. If you give Beard too much time, he'll pick you apart back there, Coach. Well, Moline had an opportunity to get that ball off tackle a little bit there after the fake to the first man, but uh, you're right, Abney stayed home, made a nice tackle, got him down short of the first down. They marked the ball at the Panther 18, which is bad news. The good news is UT has the ball. So first down for the Panthers, and Moline's defense is back out there on the field. Panthers going with two tight ends, tight wing. LeJone on the sweep. Gets outside, makes a nice cut. Out across the 20 yard line. We'll see where they mark the ball. Somewhere near the 25 yard line, looks like. That was a good pursuit by Moline. They had people moving all around. And it looked like Kelly actually came up with the tackle there on LeJone. Well, last week you saw Moline play, and in their defensive secondary, uh, they had Beard playing in there, as along with Jesse Estelle, number 25. And today, it looks like Patrick Wren and Chad Kelly are going to be back here in that secondary. And of course, not having seen Moline before, we don't know whether people are bung, banged up a little bit or whether these guys, the original starters, are just they like to use a lot of players. We we don't know that, but but anyway, oh, Ernie Jack on a handoff, off tackle, a little outside Veer look at the 30-yard line and across the 30-yard line, and it's first down for UT. Well, that was number 53, Van v v Vurum. Voren. Voren, excuse mm -hmm. me. And uh, number 85, Warren, in on the tackle there for Moline. Well, that's the Panthers, I tell you, Coach Tracy and his staff are doing an outstanding job of getting people off the ball and just doing a, a you know, I just think an excellent job of giving their kids the best opportunity to win football games. Clock's running down inside of 10 seconds now, and it looks like, Mike, that's going to be the, the last play of the first quarter. The Panthers will have the ball first and 10, their own 30 when we return. This is a Family Ties production, TCI Channel 38. Jim Sanders, Mike Strickland, Joanne Sanders doing stats, John Medina is doing the camera work today, and we'll be right back. be raining. Well, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell. It's dry in here where we're at. Yes. <laughs> yes, we like it. But I think maybe it is rainy. Uh, and it's been raining for quite some time. The field is holding up real good, looks like, so far. But UT is going to come in and out of that huddle pretty quick. Uh, Adam Carton brings the, brings the Panthers out. 5'11", 185 pound sophomore center. And UT now, first and 10, the ball just across the 30, double wing. No motion, outside Veer look. Ernie Jack carries the ball out to about the 35 yard line. The Panthers are blowing Moline off the ball right now. Well, it seems that Moline's laying back on their heels and yeah, the, the offensive line of the Panthers seems to be inspired at this point. They played a really good first half. I think uh, the Panthers built a lot of momentum and got a lot of uh, courage out of their first quarter play. Well, I think so too. And then we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the coaches for these two teams. For UT, Mike Tracy's the head coach. An outstanding coach has been successful every place that he's been. Ernie Jack, John McCormick, Chad Remmert, and Fred Segura are his assistants. We'll get to Moline here after this play. Two wide receivers, fullback hard up inside. Ernie Jack, the workhorse tonight, out across the 40 to the 41-yard line, and real close to another first down for the Panthers. Well, with the wet conditions tonight, another thing that's going to be hard for these two teams to do is wrap up and hold on to people. Yep. If the backs keep their feet moving and a little spin move by Mr. Jack there, um, they can make extra yardage that way. If you're going to upset somebody in a big game like this, you got to have somebody really come to the front. And then obviously Ernie Jack's a solid football player, no question about it. But he has not been one of the main Panther runners, running backs this year. And tonight at fullback, he's blowing off that football, making some big runs and doing an excellent job there. Panthers with a third and short. Ernie Jack again, looks like he's got across that 42 yard line. And if he did, 
that's going to be very, very close. It just depends on where they mark, and this will be real close to the way the official is standing. But it looked like, a, like I said, the Moline front line, they're holding tough there. It looked like all three of those interior linemen were in on that tackle. Well, they moved the ball. For the Panther fans over here, it looks like they moved the ball back. We're going to take a measurement. Let's take a quick look now at the Moline coaching staff. Dan McGuire, of course, his record has just been outstanding, and Dan's done a beautiful job. It's been fun to watch his kids play over the years as we've done these broadcasts. Uh, Paul Carther, longtime assistant, Kevin Gorgel, Bill Burris, Jeff O'Hearn, Joel Reiser, Kelly Wynn, Jeff Weller, and Crick Santamore make up that Moline staff. And this, they marked it, and it is measured as short for the Panthers, and UT's got a decision to make here. Early second quarter action, fourth, and let's say, uh, oh golly, about a, a, a half a yard. Yeah. We'll call it a half a yard, and UT looks like they're going to make the gamble and go for it here on fourth down as the Panthers uh, roll the dice, as they might say, and we'll see what happens here. Fourth and short. Boom, Ernie Jack hit hard near the line of scrimmage, and we'll see. That's going to be very close, and you know what? Whoever won the neutral zone is going to get this call. True, and I think maybe from here, the way I, I see it, this forward progress probably got it, but I'm not an official on the field right now. Yeah, they're going to probably want to take another look at this one, but we'll see. They are going to bring the, the chains out again, but I think you're right, Mike. But Ernie sure got turned sideways there for a second, and the cleanup crew did a nice job. So if he made it, it was that initial charge, that UT line, and Ernie Jack's hard run that made that for him. Well, it didn't look like they quite went into their eagle, but they put people in gaps this time. Well, UT made it by the distance of half the football. So Coach Tracy, a little gamble here early in the ball game, and his kids come through for him, and the linemen come off the ball, and the Panthers get a first down. So 10:02 to go here, 0-0 ball game, and UT is on the move. The ball is at the UT 42-yard line. First and 10. Double wing for the Panthers, going a lot of two tight end stuff. Sweep. LeJone on the carry. Moline can't turn the play in. He breaks it to the sideline. He gets the ball to out across the 45-yard line. Brian LeJone to about the 47. Coach, that time I was watching the line play, and number 79, Chris Davies, just crushed the guard from United Township, pushed him back into the fullback and the quarterback, kind of disrupting their course. So even though it was a good gain on there, if those two players could have got out ahead a little more, they could have had maybe an yep. eight- or nine-yard game. Chris is an awfully good football player. We'll take a look at him. Moline's running a lot of double eagle right now, Mike. <clears throat> Pinch. Oh, good run up inside by Ernie Jack across midfield down to about the 40, plus say 46 yard line of Moline. Another good play by UT. Well, it looks like Moline is trying to commit themselves to uh, stopping the run, but as they slant, sometimes you slant the right way, sometimes you slant the wrong way. Yep, and I tell you what, I think UT, if nothing else, has caused Moline to get a little bit out of that 50 defense. They're sliding people here, there, and everywhere else. Uh, Boyer at nose guard is quite a factor uh, in there, but uh, it looks like UT's uh, cart is doing a nice job coming off the football. Yeah, it looks like a little 6-1, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I think Coach McGuire has changed it up. Is. Sweet, LeJone again. I'll tell you, the, the outside guy for Moline is is uh, actually uh, going a little too wide. Kelly is, is, is trying to turn that play in, but he's coming so far upfield, he's opened up a good running lane for LeJone that time. And the Panthers have moved the ball for another seven yard, six yard game, we'll call that. Well, with the footing tonight, Kelly's coming across field and it's making an easy kick out. He's an easy target. Yep. And uh, that just opens up the, yes, like you said, the running lane a lot, a lot more. LeJone, you no know, problem with that footing, keeping yep. those feet moving. Well, it was a nice run though, and the Panthers on the move again. And UT, very impressive tonight in this first half. Did a beautiful job here. Again, two tight ends, double wing. Full back inside, Ernie Jack. Not much room to go that time as the Panthers are, are doing a nice job of mixing their plays up, Mike. They are. They're moving from the right to the left and inside and outside, and that's the only way, you know, for you to loosen up that defense in areas you need it to loosen up at. Well, right now it appears the Panthers are going pretty much with LeJone uh, on the wide stuff and Ernie Jack up the middle, and that's not a bad combination. Cercione doing a nice job of handling the ball, making it a little difficult to figure out who's got it. Yeah, that's always good, and it makes it a little difficult for me at times to <laughs> figure out who has the ball. Well, you're used to having your back to all that stuff. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Panthers going to spread them out now, going wide. Edmonds wide to the right. Uh, LeJone 
Oh, we got movement in the backfield, and the ball is on the ground. Tough third down situation. A flag on the play. Panthers moved early, but the, the snap went awry, and we'll see. We'll get a motion penalty, and, and I'll guarantee you that'll be declined by Moline. And uh, UT may well be forced to punt the ball after really a nice drive. That was a good drive, another good confidence builder. Uh, it ends in a punt, but there's nothing for them to hang their head about. The score's still 0-0, zero, zero, and they're, they're in the mix of a good game here. Well, the Panthers are going to punt the ball away, and that's, I'm sure that's a good decision by Coach Tracy. The Panthers, if you remember, took that possession at their own 18-yard line, moved the ball to Moline's. Actually, it was about the 42-yard line before that last negative uh, yardage play there. So a nice drive as Brokaw gets ready to punt the ball away again. Low snap, comes up with it very nicely. Still kicking the ball away. It's going to get out of bounds. We'll see where the official marks the ball. Looks like he's going to mark that thing. He's walking. It's going to be about the 25-yard line, Mike. Well, that's not bad field position, and uh, it keeps Moline deep in their own, own end. You want that offense to try to drive 70, 80 yards to get a score. You bet. And I'll tell you, the thing I've been impressed with, too, in a night like this, it's very difficult to keep a ball game moving, but the officials have kept this thing going. Both teams have had their offensive teams out there ready to roll, so it doesn't take long to go from offense to defense and back on the air again. So here we go. Moline's going to shift out of the, the uh, wishbone this time to one back set. Oh, quarterback's on the keeper. Beard on a nice run, gets the ball across the 35-yard line, out to about the 36 or 7 on a quarterback keeper off the option. That was a pretty good uh, little option play. It had uh, UT all sucked on the inside. It looked like they were looking for the inside veer, and uh, Beard just kept it and came off the off tackle. Well, again, another good... Uh, you know, coaching point for the for the Maroons. The last time uh, the Panthers got a pretty steady diet of Brad Hines, fullback running the ball up inside the tackles, and all of a sudden we come back with this series, boom! Now you got Beard running on the perimeter. So we'll see. And again, shifting to a double wing. Beard, long call, fullback up the middle, picks up a couple yards, dives forward, and they're going to mark that down at about the 39-yard line. That was pretty good stance by the UT defense there, uh, holding their ground this time, not getting pushed around as much. Yeah, one thing about it, when, when it's raining and nobody's passing the ball, Mike, these, these periods go by very quickly. Six minutes, 27 seconds to go here in our first half, and we have no score. And the longer a game goes along, when you are the underdog, as UT has to be figured in this particular ball game, the longer it goes, the better your chances are. That's right. Confidence builds. Moline again, wishbone shift to double wing. Two tight ends, motion. Sweep off tackle, I have a toss off tackle play this time for Moline, the ball carrier that time was number 10, and that is uh, Nathan Lynn on the carry that time for Moline. Short game. Tonight, uh, Dustin Abney made that tackle and he's having a real big game on defense. Doing a coach. nice job. And you know, you start calling kids' names out, and you know, you know, each game for the Panthers that we've had a chance to see them, it seems like a different defensive lineman comes to the front. Uh, I remember, uh, uh, Doug Seals was, was the name showed up a bunch, you know, in some of the earlier ball games. Um, in this particular ball game, why uh, Abney's name has appeared several times. The Panthers again, 6 2 defense, big third down, third and five for Moline. Well, Beard takes the ball, tries to keep it off tackle again. That ball's loose, and I think the Panthers are on that ball, Mike. It looks UT like ball. it. Yes, 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 UT yes. football. UT recovers that ball in and around the 42-yard line. Coach, there's another big break for the Panthers. You know, another confidence builder you right bet. there. They still got Moline's kind of back on their heels, waiting for things to happen. Doug Seals was on the, near the bottom of that pile. I don't know if he had anything to do with recovering the fumble, but he had to have something to do with the play. So we'll see as UT takes over in great field position. Take Moline 43 yard line, still five minutes to go in this in the first half. Well, it looks like 43. Josh McCormick is yep. doing your fullback duties yep. now, giving coach. The, giving Ernie Jack a little break. He's going both both ways, offensive, defense, fullback, and linebacker. And he also he's over here. Looks like he's trying to get his helmet fixed on the sideline down here. So that's also part of the deal. So we'll see uh, as they're working on a helmet and getting him back in the ball game as quickly as they can. But the Panthers on a short game that time, maybe a yard, we'll call it second and nine at the Moline 42 yard line. This has been a, a fun game, Mike. Not much scoring, obviously, or actually there's been no scoring. No, 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 scoring. no scoring, but some good hitting. And, uh, and on a rainy night like this, this is a fine football game. Going wide for the Panthers. Lejone is out there, number uh, 34. 
Oh, hard run up inside by Brokaw that time on the carry. Luke Ritchie was the other outside receiver that time. And UT blasting up in there pretty good, and they're doing a really nice job of getting off the football. That offensive line is doing a beautiful job. Sets up another big play, Mike. It's a third down and four. We'll call it third and four. The ball at the Moline 38-yard line. Just a little over four minutes to go here in the first half. <clears throat> Miles Edmonds at the end. LeJone going wide. Richie is going to be the tight end. McCormick is still the fullback. UT is going to call timeout. Well, UT will take a quick timeout with 3.54 to go here, and we'll take a short break. 0-0. Zero, zero. You're watching Western Big Six football at its finest here from Soul Bowl. We'll be right back. That'll come into that line, and boy, those kids are doing a nice job in that offensive line. Third down. Big third down play. They got people moving all over the place. A quick out to LeJone. We're going to bring this one back. Forget how good that one looks. The Panthers only in the arena football in the CFL. Is that play going to work? Too many people moving in the backfield, but it sure did look good. Oh, it was smooth, but uh, Panthers gave it a shot, and this may make a decision uh, a little uh, easier for Coach Tracy because that ball is going to get walked back out past that 40-yard line now, looks like. Let's see where they mark that. Move from the 38 to about the 43-yard line, and this may be an area where you'll punt the ball away now, Mike. Well, it's still third down, so we've still got a oh. chance to make a, a first down uh, here, but it's mind. more like third and eight. <laughs> Well done. I, I just I just said that just to see if you're paying attention. I got you, Coach. And you were. Well, let's see what UT. It looked like kind of a special play, and that always frustrates you too, because you know you, you you probably put something in for that exact situation, and then you know we don't get the play run properly. So we'll see how this works again. Ernie Jack and uh, Brokaw in the backfield. Lejoen, the wide receiver, and they got man coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage out there on Lejoen. Cercioni to throw. Going to go deep. Brokaw is there. That's a, just a jump ball down there, and it's incomplete. Nice defense back there by number 33 from Olean. That's Patrick Wren, and I believe uh, Jason, or excuse me, Chad Kelly was back there also. Yes, that was good coverage by Moline to get back there, and the safety floated over just like he's supposed to to interrupt the play. Yep. Uh, looked like Cercioni got a, if he could have got his feet set a yeah. little more and put a little more underneath it. A lot of pressure it. on it. Remember all the stuff I talked about that fourth down thing a, yeah. a down ago? Here we go. Replay that one. All right. <laughs> fourth down for the Panthers, and they're going to kick the ball away. Snap, broke caught, nice catch. Pressure blocked by Moline. Moline's got it, and they've got a chance to pick it up and go. Oh, he picks it up, but he can't run with it. But boy, down to the Panther 34 yard line, 33 yard line. I, I got to find out who had that ball, Mike. Uh, I'm not sure who had the 53, ball. 53, Kevin Van Voren. Let's see who's getting all the congratulations over there when they get off the field. But boy, Moline's special teams made a big play right there. That's a huge play. Big momentum changer for you, for the Maroons now. But the UT uh, uh, line there, I couldn't believe they didn't hear the, the double thud. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens in a hurry, I'll tell you. And the thing I think that's, that's also good coaching. Brokaw's been kicking the ball away from Kelly, which means he had to walk towards the right of the Panther formation, and that's where Moline rushed from. So they had guys right in his face real quick. Moline, double wing sweep. Chad Kelly with the ball, looking for a place to run. Good hard run. Across the 30-yard line down to about the 28. Talk about a momentum swing, Mike. Yeah, the big momentum swing. Now it looks like the right now the Panthers are in a bit of a daze and back on their heels trying to figure out what's going on. Well, momentum in football like in any other sport is just so tremendous. Chad Kelly that time, and I know Chad's given 100% effort, but he ran harder that time than he's run and any time he's carried the ball tonight. Wishbone by Moline, and they've gone to this now with that double wing, shifting those backs out of there with Powell and Kelly. Oh, Barrett, nice pass outside, going to be incomplete. Good pressure by UT that time. Yeah, that was number 76 with the good pressure there by UT. Uh, Chad Pru or Chris Pruitt. Nice job by Chris. Got a lot of pressure on. And it was a good call by Moline. They're sitting there with a second down and about four. And uh, at the Panther 29-yard line, we call it the 28-yard line. And, um, you know, why not? 
They still have two downs. They're in that four down territory right now. We got two minutes, 57 seconds to go. Moline has all three of their timeouts remaining. So uh, UT is going to have to make a stop because uh, Moline has time to score a touchdown from here. True, but it looks like uh, Moline's changed up their blocking schemes a little bit, which is giving them a little more push off the ball right now. Trips to the short side or to the near side of the field. Fullback trap up inside, hard run inside, down across the thir uh, 25 yard line. And I'm sure he's got enough for the first down and that carry at that time by Brad Hines, number 34. True, and that was uh, Brian Seals that made the tackle there for, uh, six yards deep. Well, the Panthers uh, adjusted a little bit to the trips, what we call trips formation, three receivers to one side of the, of the field. Moline spread UT out, ran the ball up the middle. Not a bad plan sometimes. Wishbone by Moline, they stay in it and they don't shift this time. Second man through, no place to run, but what a great run by Chad Kelly. He didn't get him wrapped up real well, and he gets down to the 20-yard line. That was a great play by Ernie Jack get back there and just stun the two power men and turn Kelly back into the pursuit of the Panthers. Well, UT, if we've watched UT play at all this year, UT doesn't waste any energy or, uh, as far as sitting back and waiting for, for, for people to run at them or, or to catch blocks. Everybody's moving towards the line of scrimmage. Linebackers are coming almost on every down and every gap's being covered by somebody in a real big hurry. Second and seven for the Maroons at the Panther 20-yard line. Kelly in motion, a toss to Kelly. Finds room off tackle, it's kicked out of bounds. Let's see, he's out of bounds near the 15 yard line. We'll see where the officials mark it. Well, that was good pursuit by your linebackers, Freeman and Jack. Those were the two that made the tackle over there on the sideline. Ran real well to the ball, I think. Because I'll tell you, Kelly took it. He was going to go outside, although that time from our angle, looks like he might have been able to turn that ball up a little bit. But we also don't know how the footing is. The footing up here in the booth, by the way, hey. is perfectly dry and absolutely perfect. We could cut on a dime up here. But on that turf, it's, it could be a little bit slippery. But, boy, the kids are doing a nice job under these conditions. Third down and three. Four down territory for Moline. Wing right. Panthers are going to bring some people here. Oh, full back up inside. Nice run. First down Moline to about the 11-yard line. That time it's Brad Hines. At the point of attack, UT did a great job at stuffing it up, but they left a little cutback lane there. Now, Moline's kids forever, Mike, and you've been away for a little while, but since, since uh, Coach McGuire's been there, his backs just get in there and you give them just any little slice, and they get those shoulder pads headed towards the goal line, and they're going to pick up positive yardage every single time. Well, that's discipline, Coach. That is. A lot of hard work there by the Moline kids. Eight or nine man front for the Panthers. Had a bunch of guys down that time. Turning back the other way, a good hard run by Moline. But that time, Mike, UT had everybody down on the line of scrimmage. That's true. And Brokaw was probably the furthest one back, and he was about three <laughs> yards off the line of scrimmage. There you go. And he became a linebacker. Well, there's going to be a timeout for Moline now. There's one minute, 11 seconds to go. They'll use their first one. They'll have two left. Hit second down. We're going to call it second to six. And the ball is on about the six and a half yard line. We'll be back in just a minute with the, 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 uh, the end of our first half. All right. Now we're back here, 111 to go here. It's the second quarter action, 0-0. Zero, zero. Moline's going to spread UT out a little bit. Six down, seven down lineman for UT. Second man through, hard roll, look out. He could pop it right through there. And it's a touchdown, good hard run by Brad Hines that time. Followed his blockers, lead blocker was Alex Powell that time. He got up in there and for Moline, they hit uh, pay dirt first, but 105 to go here. The score is six to nothing, Moline. Well, that Moline left side of that line moved as one unit and cleared it out like a little bulldozer yeah. there. Well, and I thought that uh, Hines, as a fullback, should do. I thought he did a beautiful job of just hiding back in there, kept the feet moving, turned in there towards the goal line. We've got an injured player for the Maroons right now. Let's take a real short break. We'll be back in just a minute uh, as the Moline Maroons attempt their extra point after scoring with 105 to go in the first half here, and they lead 6-0. Player there, Mike. There was number 34, Brad Hines, but he's up walking off under his own power. Could be a cramp, this kind of situation. Why was just over in the other booth here where the window is closed, is open? Mm -hmm. It's pretty cold over there. Yeah, just and it's a bit. really raining. So for the Maroons now, attempting the extra point, Nathan High or Nathan Lynn will kick, and uh, Jay Molina will hold. Problem with that, with the with the snap, the hold, and everything. And right now. Moline is unsuccessful on that extra point attempt, and the Panthers have a break there as Moline cannot score the extra point. 
Well, that's kind of a momentum thing for the, the Panthers to also is just to disrupt that and make it only six to nothing. It you bet. Gives you a chance you to still get any in. Any little take a thing, lead. any little thing like it makes a difference. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with the Moline kickoff in just a minute. Eighty. We're back here at uh, United Township Soul Bowl, Western Big Six football. Uh, J.J. Brokaw is back here to receive the, the kickoff. I think Schroeder may be back there with him. Burris will be the, the, the young man to kick off, the junior from Moline. will do the kicking as Dan Burris. His kick on line drive, fielded up front by... Who was that number 23? Is that who had that ball that yes, time, Mike? Sir. Yes, That's sir. Uh, Mike Naraki on a nice return for UT. And got that ball back to uh, about the 30, let's say 37 yard line. Naraki's a 5'9, 165 pound running back, a defensive back. He's a junior. PA guy had Chris Davies on the tackle. You got big Chris running down there to kickoffs. Moline kids do it all. Yeah, they got to. Good conditioning, Coach. <laughs> well, they are. They are. Well, the Panthers take possession of the ball. 59 seconds. See if what the Panthers want to do. Cercione is going to keep the ball off tackle. Makes a nice run. Gets turned upside down there across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Moves that ball out, uh, heading towards midfield. Coach, I haven't quite seen that defense that Moline ran right there. They had three down linemen, and it looked like they took uh, and I guess had four or maybe five linebackers, kind of their prevent defense. Could I be, could be. We'll take a look again. Of course, that, the big three up inside for them, uh, most generally are going to be Stewart, Boyer, and Davies. And we'll see. You're right. They've walked some defensive ends off of there, probably put them into coverage and cover the flat. Give yourself the best protection, although they do lock the linebackers up here this time. But their umbrella coverage in the secondary uh, as yeah, Cercione to keep again. Again, drives that ball out to about the 45-yard line. Now as the clock runs down inside of 10 seconds, it doesn't look like either team is going to use a timeout now. And we will be at halftime here from Soul Bowl. United Township High School's home field. The Moline Maroons will lead 6-0 at half. But, Mike, what a good half it was for both teams. Both teams moved the ball a little bit, got some first downs, and also played some pretty fair defense. Moline's up on the scoreboard, but it's a pretty even game by my view. Well, I think so too. And a couple breaks. The block punt obviously was the big one there in the first half. UT's done a great job. Should be very proud of themselves the way they played. And we'll be back with our second half. We'll have some stats for you and a, a little bit of discussion about the first half when we get back here. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Moline leads 6 0 as Jim Sanders with Mike Strickland. Joanne Sanders is doing the stats for us, doing an excellent job as usual. Yes, she is. And John Medina's on the camera. We'll be right back. Well, we're back from Soul Bowl as Jim Sanders and Mike Strickland. We're at halftime and just finishing it up, Mike, as UT gets ready to kick off. Uh, quick reaction to the first half. First half, real gritty and grimy. A lot of running the ball, real tough in the trenches. One big break for Moline, 6-0. Yep. And the block punt was critical. Uh, Ernie Jack, uh, for the statistics, Ernie Jack had 40 yards in the first half. And uh, the big fullback, Brad Hines, had 49. Look at this run back and look out. Nice hard run by uh, Chad Kelly, bringing that ball back. Getting back to the stats, you probably figure in a game like this, your fullbacks would be your bread and butter guys. And, and Jack for UT had uh, about nine carries, 10 carries for 40 yards. And Hines had nine carries for 49 yards. So those are the, the big gainers so far. Uh, Kelly's been kept in check. He had 15 yards. Um, 
And uh, Powell, he had 19 yards. LeJone had 16 yards for UT. Brokaw had 11 yards for UT. So pretty balanced along the way. Moline with the ball. First down, 35-yard line. Hines is back in the ball. No, it's, yeah, it is Hines, I believe, unless it's Kelly. 24-34, we'll see. It's 34, it's Hines, who was injured late there after his touchdown run, is obviously right back in the ball game. Right back in there, and that looks like the Moline line came right back to work also, opened up a real nice hole on the left side there for Hines to run through. Well, this is the time of adjustments. They've had their time in the locker room. Okay, here's what we're going to do. This guy's offset. This guy's doing this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We'll see who wins the chess game here early in our uh, second half. That ball out to the 49-yard line, so a nice gainer there, first and 10. Again, Hines with the carry, pops clean, still alive, across midfield, down to about the 42-yard line, about an 8-yard gain. That was tackled by Brian Seals there in the, ba in the backfield. Boy, Coach Tracy's going to call timeout right now. they got to get a steady diet of Brad Hines unless they get him stopped as he's carried the ball real quickly. Let's take a short break, but let's do that anyway. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back in just a minute. Well, it looks like they're running. Well, we're back, Mike. You made a comment there at the break about uh, some of the plays Moline's, are run Moline's running right now. Well, it looks like they're getting a lead blocker in front of Hines, which is freeing him up to those big, big gains inside. And the same play again. Steady diet. Hines hard across the 30-yard line. And it's not really a second man. You've hit, you hit it right on the head with a lead play. There's no op idea that the first guy's going to get the ball. He's just flying up in there. And Alex Powell, number 35, is doing a beautiful job. He's laying some wood, Coach. Well, we talked earlier about the Panthers 6-2 defense. And by splitting the receivers, you're causing UT to walk away and in, which gives them five down men. But still, the only way to neutralize all of that is to get yourself in there with a lead blocker somewhere. So the Maroons on the move. Same play. We're going to run it till you stop it. And right now, Moline's doing a nice job. They brought in that time. Uh, number 10 is in for Moline. That's Nathan Lynn. He's had some playing time, although his jersey's a little bit lighter than some of the others. But he was the lead blocker that time. Well, before that last play, uh, Doug Seals came out and Jim Van Rickey came in to replace him, number 63. It looks like Coach Tracy went with a little more size on the inside to try to help stop that. Well, sometimes you need to make a pile. We always talk about that with some of the defensive linemen. If you just make a pile, you got a chance. And, uh, and, and Van Rickey is a lot bigger player. So the Maroons now going unbalanced, going unbalanced to the far side and, and, and really attacking UT. And they may have been unbalanced for several plays. But uh, they were definitely unbalanced that time. Yes, they were. Um, and it looks like they keep running to the weak side of the unbalanced side of the line. It, it's Well, that time they actually are running to because you had two guys to the right side of the center, and Van Rickey's coming back out and Seals comes back in the game. But a lot of times it's just simply what we call an end over. They take the tight end on this right side and just make him a wide out to the other side. They're not going to pass the ball out there anyway. So we'll take a look again. You see you got the big tackle on this far right-hand side. So they have no end on this side of the line, unbalanced left. Beard's going to keep the ball this time. Off tackle. Makes a nice run after the nice fake. On a third down situation, Panthers stuff the run on the inside power play, and the Maroons go off tackle with the quarterback. Yes, they do, and it looked like uh, Seals came back in to make a good play there to disrupt uh, the, the little running game there for just a half second. Yep. Um, but they're running another guy in and out now. Well, they did a nice job that time again of, 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 uh, of running the isolation play, and Beard just kept the ball. They're getting down there again, unbalanced, end over. A little hand back this time. See if the Panthers have adjusted to the unbalanced line and uh, try to take advantage in case you overshift. So Moline's uh, uh, kind of guessing with the Panthers last time, and they didn't guess right that time. Not that time. Schroeder stayed at home just like he was supposed to, and a host of UT Panthers showed up to help him. Uh, coming in last time was Ben Schleeder uh, replacing Chris Pruitt on the defensive line there. Well. Obviously, the coaches are, want to talk to somebody about, you know, you know here again, it's, if it's unbalanced and they're not shifting properly, uh, getting to, that, to, to the power can create a problem. Unbalanced again. Power. Oh, look at this run. Pops it off tackle down near the first down after a, it was actually second down and about eight or nine. But it's going to set up a third down situation now. And, oh boy, about a yard, and the ball is going to be at the Panther. It's hard to see from this distance. Maybe we'll call it the three or four yard line. 
So a 10 yard gain there, a nine yard gain there. Third down, one yard to go. Moline's gonna stay with the unbalanced this whole series with two wide receivers left. Power play, fullback, turns it up inside, turns his feet, gets across the goal line that time. A good hard run by Brad Hines. He got stood up, but he kept the legs going. The line kept charging ahead, and Moline scores again the first possession of the second half. Well, it looks right now like uh, the Moline chess match is moving along pretty well. Oh, it was, because I, I know it's a great adjustment. You go unbalanced. You put, you make UT overshift a little bit. Now you got kids who are normally playing on guards. you got to play on the center or something like that. And it's just a whole different ball game. And the Moline coaching staff made a nice adjustment at halftime and put the Panthers in a real tough situation there. Moline appears to be going for two here, ahead 12-0, 8-11 to go here in the, in the third quarter. And the Maroons are going to come out surprised. They're going balanced line this time with two wide receivers to the, to the left. Hard run by Hines at the goal line. Let's see if he got in. The officials haven't called anything yet. He didn't get tackled, but they said his forward progress had been stopped, and the extra point attempt for Moline is no good. So with 8-11 to go, here in the third quarter, Moline has scored but failed on the extra point attempt and lead the Panthers 12-0. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a minute. Mike, we're back here. Jim Sanders with Mike Strickland and the Moley Maroons that time coming out right after halftime. We talked at half, uh, between ourselves at least, that you know whoever came out and scored first in the second half we may well have a big advantage. Boy, Moline did a great job there. Well, they've taken over uh, all the momentum in this game. It's, this is a big series for UT's offense. Let's see what they can do with it, Coach. Burris to kick off. Line drive kick, headed downfield. J.J. Brokaw fields the ball at about the 20. Behind the wall, blockers. Finds a little crease across the 30 and out to about the 32-yard line. And UT will start with real good field position. Well, UT, like I said, it's a, it's a gut check time for them. And uh, it's not going to, the Moline Maroons are not going to make it easy on them. So we'll see what they're made of right here. Well, the Panthers, as they break the huddle, will take a look at that offensive unit again. Adam Carton's at center. Freeman and Smolinski at the guard. Schleter, Brooks at the tackles. Run a lot of ends in, but right now Brian Seals is in there, number 84, and I'm, I'm, we're going to say that Jesse Schroeder is in there also. Ooh, good hard run in there by Ernie Jack that time, but not much room to run. The Maroons did a good job of stacking it up there at the line of scrimmage to make Ernie Jack kind of cut back, and on that wet turf, those cutbacks, you know, not a lot of traction there. Well, it's it's difficult. It kind of looks like from our vantage point, it's still raining. It was raining real hard here at halftime. I noticed that, but it's still raining now. And and uh, you're absolutely right. And I, I was impressed the way those white shirts are not white much anymore, but the white shirts really ran to the ball when Ernie turned that back. They were there in a real big hurry. But he gained two yards, sets up a second down, double wing by UT. Broke on it, carry balls loose. Everybody's looking to see who's got it. It's going to be third down. UT got back on the ball. Brokaw carried the ball on the sweep. Was tackled in and about the 30, oh golly, 32, 33 yard line and uh, lost the ball, but UT recovered. That play was uh, broken up by DeBleek, uh, the tie, uh, excuse me, defensive end on that play. He did a real good job of keeping his contain, even though it was a student body uh, left for the yeah, Panthers. That's right. Well, he fought He fought against a lot of odds there, but he did a beautiful job. And, and uh, of course, it helps you, too, if you got those big guys up inside. But, boy, Moline appears to be really fired up now and a chance to go three and out. And uh, uh, that will certainly help. Wide receivers trips right for UT. Cercioni to throw, and he is just tortured back there that time. Well, Matt McCauley was the one that uh, shot oh, through the gap from his man. linebacker position there, Coach. <laughs> All over the poor Panther quarterback, Paul Cercioni. I mean, he didn't have a chance to even try to unload that ball, and I didn't have a chance really to look downfield to see if anybody was open. Well, I think they jumped in that eagle covering your three middle guys and then just let uh, McCauley run right through the A gap. You know, yeah. when everybody's covered in there, He's unaccounted for. Fourth and 20, and let's just see. Brokaw has been kind of walking off to his right when he punts. Let's see if Moline's going to bring people. Nope, they're going to hold the Panthers up. Line drive, kick. Fielded back here by uh, Molina. Gets a block. Two blocks on the sideline. Knocked out of bounds in Panther territory. And we'll see where the officials mark that ball. Ernie Jack making the tackle there on the sideline after doing the snapping duties. Ernie's had a big ball game for UT, giving a lot of effort both offensively, defensively, snaps the ball, done a beautiful job in all areas tonight. Well, let's see if Coach Tracy's made some adjustment to that uh, 
offset line because if not, uh, Moline's going to take it back down the field on us again, Coach. Well, I'll be real surprised if we if we if we don't see it again. I mean, uh, Moline does a pretty good job, and here we come, t big tackle on this side, number 74. That's B.J. Jagers is the outside man. Panthers still adjusting that same play we had earlier. They got themselves in there. But take a look at that, Mike, as that play developed. They stuffed the fullback, Brad Hines, but uh, Jason Beard came out of there clean that time, Mike. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him, so uh, don't be surprised if Beard ends up with the ball very soon. Now it looks like Doug Seals made a good uh, play there running through the, the gap to make a, the tackle. But like I said, Beard was wide open, so it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if Coach McGuire saw that and made his adjustment. Yeah, but we'll see. Uh, only picked up about a yard, so it's second and nine. So the UT really needs, the defense from UT really needs to make a stand here. The ball at the Panther 43. Same, same formation, pass. Nope, nobody home. Kind of a, a missed assignment, uh, or Beard just got rid of the ball, but the receiver ran a fly pattern, and uh, Beard threw the ball as if it might be just some kind of a quick out of some kind. So, you know, I like it when the, the pro announcers, they talk about, boy, the uh, quarterback made a bad read or whatever, you know, and we don't know. I mean, obviously somebody either threw the ball the wrong spot or ran the wrong route, but we, how in the world are we going to know from up here? So anyway, the ball ended up on the grass, and that's the only thing that counts, and it sets up a third and long, and, you know, maybe uh, Coach McGuire uh, try, trying to go deep or something with a play there, and maybe the Panthers will be able to hold here, and, uh, and we'll see. A little pass over the middle. UT's there. Beautiful break back on the ball by uh, Miles Edmonds, and he almost comes up with the interception. And uh, and that was J.J. Brokaw who tipped the ball into the air, that old tip drill. Yeah, well, and he came to the you know, on a drier field. Edmonds would have got there. And, and I'm sure a few of the Moline fans over there are sitting there going, okay, we just tortured UT on a drive right down the field, and all of a sudden we come in, get great field position, and throw two passes. Go well, figure. I think uh, Coach McGuire wants to switch it up and work a little of his other things in his playbook. Uh, they do have Ooh. a 12-point lead with very sloppy field. Yeah, Boyer had a, a tough snap, and Boyer gets off, a, at least gets the punt off, but it's going to roll dead about the Panther 32-yard line. So uh, they did not punt the ball that time, Mike, far enough to get the first down. No. So UT is going to get the ball back in good field position here after Moline first drive runs the ball down UT's throat and then comes back here in this particular drive and uh, throws the ball twice. So we'll see if that gives UT a little new life. Well, the Panthers have a chance to redeem themselves even though they're playing in the sloppiest part of the field right here. Okay, Dirty Jack, hard run and a big hit at about the 34-yard line. It looks like Moline's just lining up across the board. Three on the inside, bring somebody out on the outside tackles and have somebody outside the ends and have a linebacker roaming and they're just clogging everything up in there. Well, they're very well coached. You know, we sat here, uh, you and I sat on the far side of the field in a nice warm evening here a couple weeks ago and, and watched uh, Rock Island's defensive unit play so well. And I, I'm very, very impressed tonight watching Moline's defensive group play. I think, you know, here again, we're a, a week or so away from that matchup, but man, is that, going to be, is that going to be a football game when that one comes up? So we'll see. Panthers still trying to get something going. Option play. McCormick on the carry, but Moline ran to the ball real quick that time. And UT tries a little bit of option, and UT is tackled at the 31-yard line, a loss of four. Well, that was number 25, Etzel. Uh, he was one of the, the Maroons in there, and number 54 was the other. And at this point, I can't find 54 on my roster, so yeah. we'll keep looking and see well, if we can get a name for you. The unnumbered player, huh? Well, we'll see here. UT setting up uh, three wide receivers to the uh, right side of the formation. Cercioni on the roll pass. Hits a nice pass out to uh, Brokaw. He's going to come up about three or four yards short, but UT did pick up a good uh, nine or ten yards on that play. Well, it looks like UT uh, has decided to switch up a little bit, maybe pass the ball. It's not raining as hard now. Maybe they can handle the ball through the air, and we'll see. Maybe the game plan's a little different. It looks like they're going for it, though, on fourth down. Yeah, we'll see. They're sending some guys off the sideline. Nope, I think UT is going to either run the fake, which isn't a bad idea at this point in the ball game, or they're going to punt the ball away again as Brokaw comes in, along with the, the other members of this uh, kick team, and we will see. 
Lejon is the short man, the blocking back up front. So if you're going to see some kind of a fake, got to remember that Brokaw used to be a quarterback, so there's not out of the question that he could pass the ball. But UT kicks the ball away, trying to play a little bit of field position. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. And we'll see where the officials line this one up. And they're going to mark that ball right about now. And we'll see. Mark the ball at about the, oh golly, 43, 44 yard line. And Moline will take over again. A pretty good field position. They're not too far off of midfield. And no. we just watched Moline go a good 70, well, 65 yards in that last drive right. uh, for the touchdown. So we'll see. You know, I, I, you know, I'll be real surprised if Moline doesn't come back out and, and, and pound that ball at UT again. And let's just see if UT can make some adjustments and make this thing uh, stop a little bit. Wishbone formation by Moline. They'll shift to double wing. We're away from the unbalanced. We're at a balanced line now. Motion. And hand off to the fullback. Not much room to run out there. The blocking was, uh, was uh, okay, but UT got some penetration as Brad Hines carried the ball and uh, gained actually no yards on that play. No, it looked like UT's uh, front line got a lot of penetration. Three or four guys in the backfield that time. Right. Also freeing up the linebackers to roam. I'm not sure what... What actually the um, Moline's offensive line was actually doing there? It didn't look like anybody got blocked. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you run option and you're supposed to leave a couple guys loose, but you're not supposed to leave a whole bunch of those guys loose. Well, UT coming off the ball real good now defensively. Okay. Oh, Bill. Gracious. Sakes alive. UT is winning neutral zone right now. And I'll tell you, Brad Hines says, can we go back to that unbalanced line where I actually get to run the ball down the field a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. That was Chris Pruitt with Man. good penetration and a great hit there. Tackle for a loss, good three yards. That's excellent momentum for UT at this point. Well, I'll tell you what, UT is, is showing that pride we talked about early in the ball. You talk about maybe not as big, maybe not as fast, but UT kids are always going to come to play and they're going to hit you hard. And that's just the pride and the tradition that's uh, been here for quite some time. So UT is never going to back down from anybody. You can beat us, but uh, we're going to be in the ball game the whole time. So we'll see what happens here as UT adjusts. More of a passing situation. Low toss. Kelly on the carry. He breaks the tackle. Gets out across the 47-yard line to about the 49, let's say. But it's going to set up a fourth down situation again, and UT has held two times in a row, three and out with that defense. Well, that was a pretty good seam for Moline to run through there, but it looked like Lejeune came up and hit Kelly in the mouth there pretty hard yes, at the end of that did. run. Well, he turned him back. The toss was a little bit behind Kelly, so he had to kind of stop and come up with that to begin with. And then uh, then all of a sudden, uh, the pursuit was there, and he, he had a good shot at the cutback, but Lejeune did a really nice job. Brokaw deep, received the kick for UT, Boyer to kick. Well, Panthers put a lot of pressure. Boyer gets a nice kick, and the Panthers are going to let that wisely let that ball roll dead. But the field position game is going to change towards Moline right now. Yeah, it looks like uh, UT will get their ball about the 19, 20-yard line. Let's take a short break. We'll be back here in just a minute as Moline leads 12-0 with 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And we're back here, Mike. Uh, Mike Strickland, Jim Sanders is here. And... Uh, it's quite a ball game. Kids are, are after each other real well. Ernie Jack is in motion. Cercioni on the flood pattern hits Ernie Jack in the flat. Let him just a little bit too far and it's incomplete out there, but it'd been a real nice play had, had they, they been able to connect on that a little bit. Well, it looks look like uh, Coach Tracy has changed his mind a little bit and he's run, run, run. Now he's going to see if he can get a couple of complete passes and get a little room anyways uh, on this field position. Well, it was a good, it was a good play. I mean, uh, they had Ernie Jack kind of flying out of the backfield into the flat and, and uh, had him headed up the field, which is an easier catch to make. So, so had he caught it, he certainly got a first down out of that one, and the field position would have changed some. 37 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Cercioni at quarterback. He's got uh, Ernie Jack at fullback. LeJone, there's a flood pattern again. Cercioni looking to throw. Slips down, but he wouldn't have had a chance to throw the ball. And I tell you, Mike, looking out here at the receivers, UT flooded the zone, and Moline had somebody with everyone. Yeah, it was, it was great, great coverage by the Moline Maroons in the backfield. Uh, they had a man with every man that UT put out there. And on top of that, they had great penetration by us. Uh, I think it was 78 Stewart that went in that time. Yeah, he's a good player. He's a really a good football player. Well, UT is going to let that clock run out. And we're drawing to the end of the third quarter here. So bowl and our score is Moline 12 UT 0 at the break here and we we'll back with fourth quarter action in just a minute.
48. It's a Family Ties production, and we, we mention that each week, and we, we appreciate you folks that are turning uh, the TV on and watching these ball games and taping these games. We hope you enjoy it. If you have any, any questions or anything or any comments, please contact us, and we'll uh, sure be glad to uh, help you out all we can. Get hold of Jess Medina, and he'd, be, he'd love to hear from you as we try to give you the product you want. Uh, McCormick that time for UT on the fullback trap. UT tried to spread Moline out a little bit and run up the middle on a, a fourth and or third and long, and it sets up fourth down and 15 at the Panther 13-yard line. And barring a, an unbelievably good kick by Brokaw, it certainly looks like Moline's going to get the ball in real good field position again here. Early fourth quarter action, and Maroons lead by 12. Good snap, beautiful snap. Brokaw on the kick, shanks the ball off the side of his foot and it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 23 yard line so ut's uh special teams uh and kicking woes continue to hurt them just a little bit mike well i think um the only if they had a down part of their game today it would be in the special teams area moline has executed better on the special right. teams area and now it shows on the scoreboard right well and uh, here again the block punt led to a score now moline's going to take the ball over at the panther 23 yard line and i'm not i'm not a, any wizard up here, but I'm just going to predict we're going to see some unbalanced line out of the Maroons. And uh, again, prove me wrong, they're going to go right back to the wishbone and run some double wing stuff. So, All right. so, so here we go. The motion, trap inside. Good hard run up inside by the fullback Brad Hines that time, but the Panthers have, have done a nice job against the wishbone and the double wing plays. Really, it's that, that unbalanced line that's caused the Panthers the most trouble. Well, right there, Ernie Jack and uh, Chris Pruitt in on the tackle. Uh, they're stopping that, like you said, the wishbone plays. They're in there fighting gritty on the wing T stuff. They're in there, the yard or two they're giving up. Yep. I don't know, Coach McGuire must have reasons for doing what he's doing. <laughs> well, he's, he's the head coach. That's his job, and he's getting it done. The Maroon's going to go to three receivers to the, to the uh, far side of the field. One back, that's Hines at fullback. Oh, ball's on the ground. Picked up by the quarterback, Beard. Gets the ball across the 20 to the 19. It's one of those where you got it, I got it, you got it, I got it, and <laughs> nobody had it. Well, Smolinski was the, the first tackler there to make the big hit, and then it was cleaned up by Mir and uh, the last player there. I forgot. I didn't see the number. I didn't. And the Mar Maroons number, I'll tell you, these kids are playing real hard because they're getting real dirty out there right now. So if we miss a number, we apologize for that. The Maroons send a play in from the sideline. I'll tell you, this is a, a, a really a good. Nick Rainey, uh, number 80, comes in the ball game. Uh, Scott Rice goes as a wide out to the far side of the field. I keep forgetting our, our dear friend uh, Nathan Lynn is a wide receiver out there. Drop back pass, looking in the seam. Beard, nice curl pattern in around the 10 yard line to the goal line. And I don't think he got in, but what a great throw, great catch from Jason Beard. And I want to say. And we've got to figure who was that who, that caught that ball. 89. Right, 89, 89 is Scott Rice, Rice, and he's been the, he was going into this ball game, I believe, the leading receiver uh, in the conference with number of receptions. It was that play right there, that little curl play, set up in the zone, get yourself open. That's what uh, I saw a lot of last week. Okay. Well, I know uh, talking to Coach Chad Remmer, one of the new assistants for UT, that was a play they were working hard, real hard on, because that that deep curl is a hard one to cover when they go to three wide outs. Fullback, straight ahead power play. Brad Hines powers in from the one yard line and the Maroons score again and now lead the Panthers 18-0 with 9.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, at this point, I think uh, Moline's trying to put an exclamation point on their performance today. Um, kind of breaking the spirits of the, the UT. Uh, at this point, you also look at UT on the sideline. A couple heads are being hung. Uh, I don't think they, they've given up, but right now it's a big, long, tall hill to climb in the fourth well, quarter. Well, Mike, you've, uh, in your high school career, you were on the winning side a lot more than you're on the losing side, but another, another tough play to special teams. Molina looking to throw. It's a, <laughs> we had, I think old, uh, who's my guy out there? Uh, Chris Davies. Big Chris ran a pretty good route out that time on the, on the fire call on the, uh, the missed uh, snap and everything. So it was kind of a wild play. The point I was going to make was because of the weather conditions, uh, uh, right now with the rain, the wind, and the cold, 
Well, I know one thing. My experience tells me the Moline sideline is about 20 degrees warmer than the UT sideline right now with the way the score is. So oh, yes, sir. We're going to take a real short break here, and we'll be back with fourth quarter action. Maroons lead 18 to nothing with 9.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, we're back here at Soul Bowl. The Maroons leading, heading towards this, uh, the, the continuation of their undefeated season. And Mike, they've been very impressive tonight. I've got to say that. They have. They, like I said in the pregame, the big guys up front have made the difference. Uh, Mundo and Chris Davies and Eric Stewart have been really impressive this evening, especially on defense. You better believe it. Up front, McCormick will take this kick on one hop. Good hard run across the 40. Tackled right on the 45 yard line and a great return by uh, McCormick for UT and uh, I, I was that was a very very impressive run back Josh McCormick a uh, sophomore 165 pounder well he got his shoulders in north and south and got to moving there legs were moving real fast it looked like uh, he had a little extra energy in there well the Panthers take over and let's see if uh, UT can uh, gather a little momentum here and and see what's happened as they uh, happening here as they go to the offense, Sessioni at quarterback, Ernie Jack and J.J. Brokaw. Quick slant to LeJone, nice catch. Out across the 45-yard line to about the 47, and a nice pickup of about six yards for UT. Well, at this point, it looks like United Township is going to go through the air, pick up some yardage, maybe try to move the sticks a few times and get, get some points on the board. Luke Ritchie comes in the ball game for UT, and again, the Panthers are rotating three or four guys. Schroeder's coming in and out. Um, Miles Edmonds is in and out of the ball game, carrying plays in from the sidelines. And, of course, Brian Seals is one of those ends, too. As, as to the near side, uh, Brokaw. Ernie Jack, a good hard run. That's one of those where if the conditions were better. Ernie could have got his legs up just a little bit. He actually fell over his own blocker, I think. But, boy, there's a nice little crease there, and he picked up a couple more yards. There was a few yards and a positive play, but they, there was a nice crease there. I don't know what happened uh, to the defensive line of the Maroons, but they did leave a gap there for Ernie to get through. Well, it's a good hard hitter, and the UT team is coming off the ball in, in a real big hurry. Lejon and, and uh, Ernie Jack in the backfield. Sorcioni at quarterback. Ernie Jack got nailed right as soon as he took the handoff. Eric Stewart making a big play there. A huge play for Moline there. Gracious. He was there. If he just would have made a pocket, he might have been able to take the handoff. That's how quick he was there. Fourth down. UT does not send the punting team in the ball game. No sense for doing that. 7.51 to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Panthers are going to go for it. Fourth down, and we'll kind of call it four yards to go. The ball right on the 50-yard line. Double wing, double wide out. Cercioni, curl pattern. Oh, almost a great defensive play by Moline. They curled Miles Edmonds and tried to throw the ball to J.J. Brokaw. And that was Scott Rice back off his defensive end, fell into coverage. He's a tight end. He knows how to get his hands up and make that play. Boy, a great play. He broke back to that ball beautifully. Well, that's a change of possession, and the Moline Maroons with that offensive team are going to have an opportunity to take over. Mike, we might see a few subs in here maybe for Moline, so we'll try to, to get those kids uh, mentioned as we go along here. Uh, don't look to necessarily going to see a whole lot of new faces out there yet, but uh, if we find some, we'll try to get them across to you. Well, Moline. look for the white jerseys, Coach. We like got one in the backfield 65. right now, but I, I, can't, uh, I can't figure out what his number is yet. Beard's still a quarterback, though. Fullback carry. Nice run. Beautiful. Across the, right to the 40-yard line, the new man in the backfield for Moline is number 42, and that's uh, Bob Strupp. He's a 5'10", 173-pound junior. Number 65, uh, Jim Hudson, is also in the game, at, uh, offensive guard now. Yep, he's 6'1", 190-pounder. He's a junior. So a nice run that time uh, in there by Strupp. And uh, the junior running back blasted that ball for almost 10 yards, a little over nine, places the ball right on the 40-yard line. Second and short, 6.56 to go here. I think the Maroons, would, if they could, would like to beat the Panthers by a similar score that, as Rock Island did. I think that would be their goal at this point in time. Quick pitch. Nice. Oh, UT turned it back nicely, but it looks like that time Chad Kelly carried that ball for another Moline first down. Well, that was a good uh, pursuit by Dustin Smolinski to get out there 
and make that tackle on Kelly as he was cutting back. Number 82, Dan Burris was in the lineup that time. He's been doing their kicking off, and he's another junior end for the Maroons. Did a nice job there. They, I think he's been running plays in the ball game. Nick Rainey, number 80, comes in with a play formally, and he reports as a wide out. Number 10 is Nathan Lynn. And in that backfield, you have Bob Strupp, the fullback. He's going to get it, and boy, UT's right there. Didn't wrap it up. Strupp on a good hard run across the 30 to the 25 to the 23-yard line. Well, that was a great initial hit by uh, Carton. He got in the hole, got up there, and hit the guy. Just didn't wrap up and hold him. Yep. Looking at UT, seeing if there's any new faces out there. But uh, UT still fighting hard. They're hanging in there real tough. And that's pretty much that regular defensive unit out there. And I tell you, these kids have fought their hearts out tonight, Mikey. Really, I know they're going to feel bad after the ball game. But I'll tell you, they, they've given a great and valiant effort tonight. They played hard and not stopped, Coach. Wishbone by the Maroons. Two tight ends. Fullback's going to carry the ball. Not much room to run, but didn't need much to get a first down. We'll see where they spot this. It's going to be close to the first down as Bob Strupp carried the ball uh, to what appears to be a just, a, a just short of the first down and sets up a third down situation. Now third and less than a yard for Moline. And Jim Van Rickey's back in the game, number 63, uh, put a little size in the, in the middle there. Patrick Odina, uh, uh, six foot, 170 pounder, number 84, comes in the ball game from Moline at left end. Full back again, oh, a nice hard run inside. That's a, that's a, Bob Shrupp is a, is a powerful runner. He's not real big, 173 pounder at five foot 10, but man, does he get off the football. And J.J. Brokaw and Brian Seals combine on that tackle there. Well, this is another a nice drive by Moline, getting off the football, led mostly by Strupp as the, uh, as the power runner in this formation. And Moline's going to go to three receivers, excuse me, two wide receivers right, tight end left, offset eye, hand back, see what happens here. A nice run by Moline in across the 15-yard line, down to about the 12 as the clock continues to run. Looks, Kelly, I believe, on the carry that time. Yes, it was, Coach. It looks like Moline's got back to their power running game. Not so much uh, the offset eye this time or offset line, but uh, they're balanced and they're just running it north and south. Yep, good hard run that time, and, and it's a it's a it's a challenging offense. They've got uh, it's it's fairly simple. There's not a whole lot to it, but there's 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 things that are fairly complex there that, that give the defensive teams a lot of problems. Two wide receivers to the right. Run again. Fullbacks running loose again into the UT secondary across the 10, across the 5, and down to about the 4-yard line and another Moline first down. That's, that's Strupp again. Well, Coach, when you put some fresh legs in behind that big line, this is what you get. The well, and you want, that's right. And, of course, you know, we talked a minute ago about Ernie Jack not being able to get his legs up. Of course, Ernie's playing all, every down on offense, every down on defense and special teams. But that's what the one thing that, that Strupp's doing right now is he's coming through their high knees. They're just churning, and he's staying behind his blockers real, real well. So a nice job by Moline. Jason Smith looks like he's in at center right now for Moline, number 57. A fairly clean jersey in there. Quarterback keeper this time. Beer gets down near the goal line, short, maybe by a yard. Well, the host of uh, Panther tacklers there, led by number 83. I think it might be Luke Ritchie. If yes, I'm not it mistaken. is. Yes, it is, Mr. Ritchie. Moline bringing some more players in the ball game here, kind of in and out a little bit. 84. We talked about him just a minute ago. Hodina, Patrick Hodina. 82 is the other end, and that's uh, Dan Burris. Wishbone by Moline. Line still coming off the ball real well. Second and goal. Ball at about this call to two-yard line. Hand off hard. No place to run as UT stuffed that play big time, even short of the line of scrimmage. That was a good play by the UT uh, front line there, clogging up the hole and protecting their goal. Like, uh, well, they don't want to see another 24-0 game, I do not believe. I don't believe they do either. Kelly on the carry that time, and uh, UT did a beautiful job. And it's, they, uh, Moline actually lost about a yard that time. So we're going to call it third down and three as the Maroons bring the ball to the line of scrimmage. Third down situation. Wishbone, two tight ends for Moline. Quarterback change for Moline. Moline on, on uh, quarterback. Oh, nice run up inside. 
Let's get a look there. That's number 35, and that's Alex Powell, who's done a lot of blocking early in this ball game for Brad Hines, and this time he gets the carry on the handoff from Jay Molina. I think that was a good reward for him. You know, he's worked hard today. He's, he's been an intricate part of this offense, and to get a score, that just makes him feel good. Yeah, I agree with that. And, I, and everybody, everybody's contributed. Molina's backs have always been good blockers for each other, and they seem like care who carried the team you played on especially the last two years you were on, on, our, on our high school team here uh, we had backs that loved to block just about as much as they love to run the ball and that certainly helps the kick is up and the kick is good this time and uh, Moline has built the lead to 25-0 and uh, with two minutes 30 seconds to go here in the ball game we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in just a minute We're back here, Mike, and uh, kind of winding down. Time's winding down this Western Big Six football game, and it's been a good football game. Moline has run off here in the second half uh, after leading six to nothing at halftime, but they scored in the first possession of the second half to build it to 12, and now all of a sudden we look up there with 2.30 to go in the game, and Moline leads 25-0. The kick deep to UT. Jesse Schroeder picks up the kick. Moline pursues quickly. Big hit coming. Wow, that was a lovely <laughs> hit, lovely by Jason Smith, 6'2", 190 pound uh, in and a linebacker. Man, he did a job there. So let's check a look at some of these these adjustments here by the teams. We might find another new player out there. There's some lighter colored shirts out there, which is kind of neat. Moline goes on the defense, the Panthers on offense. Panthers break the huddle. Normal lineup is in there, and that's to be expected at this point in time. UT still trying to make Cercioni on a quarterback keeper. Pops it clean. That's the Moline inside trap play. Number 62 makes a nice tackle, Mike. That was Greg. I, I can't say that name, Coach. Aslison. Okay. Aslison. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I could that. be wrong, and I apologize if I am. Okay. Okay. Not, not only to you, but to the family. Uh, Number 55, Travis Swanson is in there for Moline also, and we have a new defensive tackle out here. That's, uh, what, Adam Meyer, number 76, is that right, Mike? Yes, it is. We got a new kid on the other side over there, too. I, I haven't got a number on him yet. Cercioni juggles the ball, keeps the ball, man, might have picked up the first down. Another new tackle is As Aslison. Okay, that was who that was, okay. Well, Moline's uh, done a nice job. I, again, uh, uh, if we have an opportunity to broadcast that Moline Rock Island game, that'll be one of those pickums that if we if we do that one, wherever we're at, that's going to be a tough choice. I'll guarantee you that right now. The Panthers have the first down, down to one minute, 28 seconds to go. Cercioni throws, nice catch out here by Brokaw, and driven out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And Paul Cercioni again doing a very nice job for UT tonight at quarterback. <coughs> Number 85 Warren there on the coverage taking uh, Bro Brokaw out of, out of bounds there. Ball's out of bounds, clock stop. Panthers moving the ball again. This sets up a second down, second and about two. Ball at the UT 35 yard line. Cercioni rolls the pass, receiver wide open, incomplete out there. Looked like that pass was intended out there for Schroeder. He broke back to the ball, but it just kind of slipped through his fingers. Looks like right now Moline's giving a nice soft coverage. They're going to let him complete it, but nothing deep or nothing past him. And they're just trying to finish out the fourth quarter here. Well, I agree with that. That's, and that's, uh, that's good, smart play by the Maroons. Keep everything in front of you. Don't give any UT any momentum or anything to build on. UT going to trips left, third and two. Ernie Jack, the only remaining back, and he gets the carry and gets the first down out across the 35 to about the 38-yard line as UT picks up another first down, stopping the clock with one minute, 14 seconds to go. And it was Chris Powell in there on the tackle uh, of Ernie Jack there. It was a nice big collision. Yeah, it was. It was a good one. Got Nathan Lynn, number 10, who played some on offense tonight, a lot on offense. As a matter of fact, he's in there playing in the defensive unit right now. Uh, back to pass, Cercioni looking for the curl. Nice throw to Seals. Seals makes a really nice catch across midfield. Brian Seals to about the Moline 48-yard line. 
That was a good uh, pitch and catch there by UT, but I was really impressed. There was four Maroons around the ball. Yep. You know, it's very quickly, and they were there. Now keeping it in front of them. Cercioni getting a chance to throw the ball here a little bit. Still impressed. Still raining. It's still cold. And both these teams have executed very well under, I think, some very adverse conditions tonight. Ball's on the ground. Cercioni recovers it. Did a nice job there. Well, UT now is going to try to hustle a little bit here. We're down to 45 seconds to go. In and out of the huddle in a hurry come the Panthers trying to kind of see if they can get themselves a, a, at least a score on the board here in the last minute of play in this Western Big Six showdown. The Maroons coming in uh, undefeated for the year and 2-0 and oh in the Western Big Six and UT coming in with a 4-1 and one record and 1-1 one and one in Western Big Six and it looks like UT is going to go to 1-2. and two. It's going to make next week's game with Alleman very, very important. Pass to Schroeder, incomplete. Next week, UT, of course, now UT will have two losses, Mike. And now you start talking about playoff implications and the looking ahead for UT. After six games, they've got, they've got Alleman, and they've got Galesburg, and they've got Sterling. And those are two, you know, Galesburg appears to be struggling a little bit, but Alleman, as you told me several times this week at school, they're looking a lot better. So uh, uh, UT's got, got a win you know, uh, uh, one of those uh, two ball games. You actually got to win two out of the three, but but uh, we're going to give UT the Galesburg game, hopefully. And they've got to either beat Alleman or they got to beat Sterling, one or the other. And Sterling the whipped up on Alleman pretty good. They this did real the early. Pre played Geneseo, a pretty good ball game, so we'll see that. Well, the clock's going to run down here with that being the last play of the ball game as Coach Tracy goes across the field to shake hands with Coach McGuire. We've had a very interesting and hard-fought football game tonight here at, at Soul Bowl. The United Township High School Panthers gave a valiant effort, but the Moline Maroons showed that they may well be, uh, if, if Rock Island's the number four or five rated team in the state of Illinois, Moline cannot be far behind or they may be right with them. That is true, that is true. Moline showed tonight that their size and their conditioning in the second half just wore down the Panthers. And with that type of uh, attitude and adversity, the Panthers did a really, really good job, I think, of keeping into the game, keeping their heads, and and trying really hard, but the size and the speed of Moline eventually warmed down and well, 25-0. There you go. Well, Mike, thanks again. Great job again. This is Jim Sanders from Mike Strickland. Joanne Sanders helped us with the stats tonight. John Medina on the camera. Hey, this has been a Family Ties production, Channel 38, and we appreciate you folks watching. We'll see you next week. I think our ball game next week, Mike, is uh, UT Alleman. Be there or be square. Right on. We'll see you, folks.